Today we're going to do something fun. Well, we always do fun things, but today we're going to get messy and we're going to really be creative. We're going to work with paper mache. And if you've never done paper mache, all it is is basically using a glue recipe with a lot of newspaper. And a lot of you will have newspapers that come in your mailbox, you know, that junk mail. Start saving those because this is what you're going to need. And if you don't have newspaper, you can use other kinds of papers like paper bags on a lunch from a lunch bag or just any kind of material that's paper. You are all going to need a glue bottle, which I've included in your packet. And you will need maybe a balloon. Okay, so either a balloon or a lunch bag, a lunch paper bag. You've seen the paper mache method, we are going to make masks. And masks have been around for centuries. Masks have been associated with ceremonies that have social and religious significance. So a lot of times for certain events like funerals, uh, you would see people wearing masks or even when they were trying to reach spiritual um, guidance or ancestors. A lot of masks are more known in places like China, in Africa, in other countries. Um, you might even know about having um, the masks that are celebrated during Mardi Gras in New Orleans. So there are all kinds of masks, full face or even just eye masks. So these are some samples right here of really fun and traditional masks. something um, a piece of paper or something on your table because this is a messy process and also find a space that you can you can leave things to dry because we're going to go through these steps and there's going to be a lot of drying time in between so I want to make sure that you are ready so you've seen some kind of liquid glue this is a uh, four ounce bottle you're going to take half, it's one to one, which means I have half a cup of water here and I'm going to pour half of uh, this, which will probably be the whole bottle because usually half a cup is uh, four ounces. So I would squeeze the whole bottle of glue into this water. Or you can do it in smaller amounts so that you can save some. What I've already done is I've already mixed it and poured it into this container, okay? And I still have a little bit left over from last time, but I'll just keep adding. So it looks, um, this is going to be your paper mache liquid. So I just have it in a container because if I need to stop working, I want to be able to close it and keep it safe. You're going to get yourself a balloon. Um, again, if you don't have a balloon, if you have some paper bags, we're going to try both methods so you can see how both methods work. But let's start with a balloon. So you're going to grab paper and cut it up into little strips. And some of you may have done this in kindergarten or in elementary school where you did paper mache. And, you know, you remember the steps where you just have all these little strips of paper cut up ahead of time. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to, I'm going to show you um, the best method of doing paper mache. And that is that we're going to put strips in one direction. And then we're going to go in the opposite because we want to build a nice strong foundation. Now, because we're only making a mask, we're not going to cover the whole balloon. Okay? We're only going to cover the front of the balloon. Whichever the front is, whatever you want to pick. Now, I, as you see, I have my balloon. Um, it's, on, it's sitting in a cup because obviously if I put it down, it's going to wobble. And I kind of just taped it to a, 
a regular little cup here so it holds. I'm going to show you first the balloon method and then we'll talk about the paper, uh, the paper bag method. So once I have my solution, I'm going to start with one strip. Um, let's see here. I'm going to make this the front. And what I do is I dip the paper and it doesn't need to be completely covered. It doesn't have to be soppy wet. I usually just dip the paper and I'm going to start going in this direction and just putting it down on the balloon. We'll do one, one step at a time. There we go. And you'll see there's nothing on the back of my balloon because it's all going to be on the front. Okay, so I put a lot of newspaper on half of my balloon. I'm going to set it here to dry so that I can do, uh, I can show you the, the other method. So in case you can't get a balloon, if you can get a paper bag, this works too. So what I do is I take a paper bag, and we're going to use this the same as we did the balloon. I'm just going to fill it up with plastic bags. And it, don't worry about it because we're going to take the bags out later. But the paper bags is sort of our, um, it's called, the word is armature. When we put something together and we need a shape, we need to form a shape inside. Either you can use newspaper inside. So let me, I have some newspaper here. Oh, but I need that. So I have some newspaper. I can stick it in the paper bag or plastic bags. And this time, so you see this is going to shape. This is going to be the shape of our mask, this front part. So I don't, I'm just going to push it down on the table, put it down on the table, and do the same thing I did with the balloon but I'm doing it on the paper bag. So what I'm gonna do here is take my strips of paper. Again, you need to do, making the, using the strips creates a strong bond. That's why we don't just use pieces of paper. The strips kind of lock up together and create a really strong bond for our paper mache. So when I use, the paper strips, I'll put them inside my liquid again. And I'm gonna go ahead and start in one direction, like I did with the balloon, same thing. I'm gonna go this way and then this way. That's a good start, going this way and crisscross. Now I'm gonna have to get some on the corners here because I'm already seeing some issues. And then we're gonna let this one dry. Okay, so you're going to, um, once you get either method, like I use my balloons, uh, make sure you cover it a couple of maybe two or three layers, one going in one direction, one going in the other one. And I'm doing also my paper bag method. And now we have to let this dry. Really, we gotta let it dry about uh, 24 hours, so overnight. So tomorrow, when all this is dry, 
we'll go to the next step. All right. Have fun. See you then. Okay, so we're back. We have let the mask dry overnight. You want to wait till you can tap on it and it's really, really hard before we go to the next step. So this is my, this is the fun part. I get to pop the balloon. Uh, so let me just grab some scissors and poke it. There it goes. And you want to just, it will actually just come out. I'm going to continue to cut here and get that balloon out of there. Oh, careful not to break your mask. Let me cut some parts out of it. And there we go. All right. So, there we go. We have a hollowed uh, out shape. And, and so the first thing I do is usually I trim the edges and clean it up a bit so that it's going to fit pretty much like a mask would fit. All right, so there we have the base of our mask. Now the same thing with the paper when we did the the bag, you remember that? The first thing is I go ahead and take out all the stuffing, just like I did the balloon. And it's hard enough so that nothing's going to hurt it. And then I cut the back of it off. Clean up, but here's our second mask. <laughs> Now, a couple of things on your mask that you're welcome to do before we paint them is you are welcome to cut holes for the eyes if you want to cut out holes. I don't do that myself. I like to just paint everything on my mask. I like to paint the eyes, the mouth, the nose, uh, whatever else I, I want to do to them. And then um, I put strings on them so I can hang them up as decorations on a wall. So for me, the masks are not to be worn, they're more a decoration. But if you want to have an opening with your uh, eyes would be, that's fine. And then you can decorate around them. So for the painting these masks, I really suggest using acrylic paints. Those are the best kind because you have thick paint that will cover all the newspaper. So that's the best way to start with these masks. And I'm gonna kind of go through the process as I paint my mask. A couple of things I'm gonna suggest. They sell these really inexpensive even at the dollar store. Um, these are really great for painting large areas. But if you don't have this, I just take a sponge. And a sponge works really good. We wanna cover the mask with a wash. And a wash is just one color that's going to completely cover the newspaper. And then once that's dry, then we can start adding fun features. We'll add the eyes, the mouth, um, all the things that make our mask what we want it to be. And again, class, you don't have to make this a person. Um, you can make masks that look like animals. You can make them look like creatures, anything you want. This is a fun mask. I went ahead and did a two different washes just to get started. One that's all white and one that I had a layer of black and then um, sort of gray streaks. And I don't recommend doing it all black because then you're gonna have to, um, in order to get your eyes and everything, you can only use white because really nothing's going to show up against the black. But I wanted to experiment with this gray idea. But now I have to let this stage dry again for quite a few hours so that every so that the paint is completely dried and ready to continue. I had a lot of fun doing this. I hope you will too. <laughs>